above the streets and houses, rainbow climbing high. Everyone can see it smiling over the sky. Paint the whole world with a rainbow. Hello, everybody. It's Sippy and Jude. Now. We're making a film today. Yes, we are. It is all about a famous puppeteer. I know. Who could it be, I wonder? Oh, I know. It's, it's Jim Henson. No. It's, it's Phil Fletcher. No. It's Roddy LeDrew. And it's all about his life with puppets. <laughs> How do I define a puppeteer and what is a puppeteer? Well, basically a puppeteer is a person that doesn't use his own body to um, perform a character, but uses an inanimate object such as a piece of wood or a piece of plastic, and that will be transformed into a character. And therefore the puppeteer uses that to manipulate and hopefully the audience gets the character from the actual object that's in the puppeteer's hand. And that's really what I would define um, a puppeteer. I was born in Toronto and um, we lived there till I was about two and a half. But my father had decided after that that he would like to get an English education. So we sold up the house and we put all the money onto a boat trip all the way from Toronto to Southampton in England and it took quite a few weeks. And so we eventually arrived in Southampton um, and eventually we moved to London um, where we stayed originally in a single flat in South London in Clapham South. But then we were lucky enough to get to move um, to Stockwell, South London, where I lived quite well, for, certainly for the first 15 and a half years of my life. In fact, 16 I was before I moved out. what were the puppet shows that sort of influenced me when I was very young watching on television? Well, Watch With Mother was a sort of series of programmes and they had lots of puppet shows in, in, those, in that series. One of them was Andy Pandy, there was The Wooden Tops, there was Bill and Ben, oh, and there was another one called Robovia. But I think it was, what was influenced me during that time was all the different styles of puppet they used. There was marionettes, the string puppets, there was the glove puppets. There were sort of wonderful sets and I thought, wow, you can do an awful lot with, with puppets, which I hadn't really imagined in, until I saw those sort of shows. So yes, I think it was a mixture of all those, watching those programmes that made me think, yeah, maybe one day I might become a puppeteer. I did have doubts of becoming a professional puppeteer because I thought I didn't know quite how to do it. Um, I'd moved on to um, um, senior school and I'd sort of joined the choir at school, and not that I was very good really, and I went into the drama group and that was all right, but it wasn't fun. But I discovered there was a puppet guild and this puppet guild um, um, basically was in South London, had its meetings there. And that's what made me in a way think, actually, I might be to do this professionally. Because when I went to this guild, I saw a lot of shows, marionette shows, string puppet shows this time, mostly, occasionally glove puppet shows. But these people were doing it professionally. They were getting their money. Anyway, one of the meetings at the guild, there was a group of puppeteers going off to a new puppet theatre which had been built, which was called the Little Angel Theatre, and that was in North London. But one of the puppeteers that had come over from, actually from Australia, a lovely lady called Edith Murray, she said, don't worry, Ronnie, I, I'd like to go to the puppet theatre another time, so I'll take you along, we'll meet up and we'll go along. Well, that was really very exciting. So. Um, sometime in sort of, I think, June 1963, um, Mrs. Murray and I visited the Little Angel Theatre 
and um, when I sat in that tiny theatre um, and when the curtain went up and I saw this show which happened to be a story called The Little Mermaid which was by Hans Andersen, beautiful marionettes, carved figures swimming through the water, lovely scenes, lovely lighting, lovely music, well that totally changed my whole mind about sort of um, whether or not I wanted to be a puppeteer. I definitely wanted a puppeteer. I'd made up my mind after seeing that show. That is what I really want to do. This is the story of a mermaid. No ordinary mermaid, but a princess. And the youngest and most beautiful of the Merman King's three daughters. Of course she lived in a palace, but it was under the sea. So as you might expect, it was no ordinary palace. But even this brought her no happiness. She was not content to be a mermaid. She had fallen in love with the world of men. When I went to this theatre and there was a building where maybe I could possibly learn to do puppets really well. Um, and so that, in a way, after seeing that show, put a sort of sparkle into my head and I thought, yes. This is the thing I want to do. And I wrote a letter. Dear Ronald LeDrew, Yes, I recollect your visit to this theatre with Mrs Murray a week or two ago, and I'm very pleased to hear that you wish to train as a puppeteer. I would like to have a talk to you about it. We can probably offer you training here either at a nominal fee or in return for services rendered, looking after props and sets and helping with scene changes during the shows and so on. I mean, that paragraph, I thought, wow, they, he's actually offering me a job. I mean, it didn't matter that there was any money. I, didn't, well, I wasn't doing it for the money. I was doing it for the, the fun of it all. Anyway, I got back home after, and I, I was waiting for my parents to come. I said, so what, how was the um, your... Um, visit to the Little Angel Theatre and they, I said they were wonderful, absolutely super and I'd really want to work there. Anyway my mother being a bit softer so I said oh come on Les let's go into the kitchen so they went off into the kitchen it was probably the longest two minutes of my life waiting for them to return to see whether they decided whether I was going to do this job or not. Anyway they came in my mother, my mother had to twinkle in her eye and said look we've decided that we'll give you the opportunity to work at the Little Angel Theatre as an apprentice and that's where I started my professional career. Obviously my first job um, wasn't actually standing on the bridge working the puppets, that was for somebody who had a bit more training and I realised that and in the letter that John Wright had written to me he said you know you'll be helping looking after props and set at the beginning and that's what I did. So during the shows I would help, when the curtain came down for a scene change I would put the props onto the stage, take the old ones off. That's sort of my first job backstage. But while the scenes were on, I was watching John Wright and Lindy and Chris working the puppets. So I was sort of taking in, milking in all the artistry they were doing with the puppets. And during the lunch hours after the shows had finished or, you know, break between the shows, I was able to go up on the bridge and have a work of the puppets myself. John Wright, um, said to me one day, look, um, Ron, it's about time you should work a puppet now in the show. Oh, I was terribly excited and I thought, and I rehearsed this little piece. It was just a little dog jumping into a pram. We had one bridge that meant that I had to cross my arm over John Wright, and, but I couldn't quite reach around John Wright. He wasn't fat, but I was a bit younger and smaller. And, I, and he said, um, Oh dear, well I think we're, probably that won't be the part for you, we'll have to think of another, another time. Well I was devastated, I thought, oh no, it was my first moment, I missed it, I couldn't do it. But, latterly, um, a few months later, we were on tour in Oxford, and John Wright um, suddenly said to me, Ronnie, you've got to come up on the bridge, you're doing the next few shows. And I was doing like the, the main character. So that was my first venture actually operating, So, and that would have been about 19... 66, I think, I can't remember the actual year. In May 1964, John Wright was reorganising his company and sadly he couldn't keep me on at the theatre. But he very kindly um, enclosed a cheque for £10 um, towards my 
visit to Czechoslovakia, which was going to happen as soon as I left the company on uh, May the 3rd. And I had two weeks of a wonderful trip um, working with a group of puppeteers on an amateur puppet festival there in Karlo Vivari in Czechoslovakia. Came back home from that feeling really excited. And then I got a phone call from another very well-known puppeteer, Jan Bussell of the famous Hogarth puppets. And his famous puppet, of course, was Muffin the Mule, that was the first television puppet to appear. Um, when I say the first television puppet, the first television puppet icon. Anyway, I then talked to Jan and he said, look, I'd be very interested in um, having you come and work with us on a traveling touring show, which was in a caravan and you'll be doing stage management and helping out and doing all this sort of various jobs. And I had a letter then from Jan saying he would like me to help with his performances from July the 20th to September the 5th and the fee would be £10 per week and plus whatever I should pay for national insurance. So he's going to pay my national insurance contribution as well. Um, but it was understood that I would be um, self-employed when well, I was already self-employed, so that was great. And I had an amazing time working with Jan Bussell um, and the Hogarth puppets and his wife Anna Hogarth in this wonderful caravan um, doing the stage management and occasionally doing a tiny bit of puppetry, but mostly stage management. But that was the beginning of my time working with the Hogarth puppets. Oh, uh, hello. I said hello. You mustn't look at me. No, I look funny. What happened about Rainbow was I had a friend who was a student at the Little Angel Theatre for a while, John Thurtle. Anyway, out of the blue, I got a phone call um, and it was from John, John Thurtle, and I said, oh, hello, John, what do you want? He said, well, actually, Ronnie, we've decided that I've got so much work on, I can't actually do the performing um, working zippy anymore on Rainbow. Would you like to come in and have a meeting with the producer? I, long I go for a lunchtime meeting with Pamela Lonsdale, the original producer, at Tellington Studios, where Thames did recorded the programme. And she sort of said, oh no, so what sort of puppets have you done before? And I said, well, I've worked all these wonderful puppets, the Little Angel Theatre. She said, oh, that's very interesting. What television work have you done? A few television documentary type things with puppets, again with the Little Angel. And I said, well, I did a, a television puppet thing with um, the Hogarth puppets. Said, oh, Hogarth puppets. And I thought, oh, she said, now they were famous for something. I said, yes, Muffin the Mule. Oh, wonderful, my child. And she said, well, you've got the job. And I couldn't believe it. I thought, well, I haven't worked a puppet for you anything you know we've just had lunch and, and then about two weeks later um, I was asked to come up for my first um, day working on Rainbow and I signed a contract for six weeks we did the first rehearsal and stuff and I was doing the puppets I was quite nervous to be honest um, but Valerie was lovely working she was doing George and I was sitting under the table and working Zippy um, and um, Roy was very helpful and the scripts were in those days they were fairly early it was 1973 I think fairly early in the days of Rainbow and they were perhaps a l less I'm not going to say less exciting but they were a bit more sort of educational so it was pretty obvious of what Zippy was going to say latterly as the programs went on um, they got we got much more adventurous and Zippy was much more naughty and and um, so this character developed quite a lot. <laughs> I know one, I know one. When you go a camping, oh, what do you have to do? You have to fetch the water. That's what campers do. And when the work is over... I mean, what was lovely was, for me, the, the, when I realised, um, was when I got back and, uh, you know, we recorded, I don't know, um, say 30 programmes in the first series that I did, but they weren't being shown straight away, they're still showing the old programmes. Um, and then by the time I, um, the programme went out, I, I think I went home to my mum and my sister and we all watched the first programme going out, you know, because I was, I, it, was, it happened to be that I wasn't in the studios, I weren't, because we had time off while the, the next series being written, and usually it was when the new series was being first shown, so you had six weeks or something off while they were writing the new next series. And um, so then, you know, we'd watch the programme and, I, and I'd say, oh, that's me, oh my God, there's Zippy, oh, that, ooh, it's good. And then my mother, I mean, what my mother was terribly impressed with was the end credits when they went up. She thought the programme was funny and good. But then puppeteers, Ronnie LeDrew, Valerie Hebbard, and, oh, that's you, you know. And of course she'd f tell all her mates, you know, all her friends. And everybody, I mean, that was really nice for them to really think, well, he's now made it as a puppeteer. Because if you've done television, you're a 
you're famous, you know, you're big. Well, as it happened, I wasn't actually famous me per se. The puppet was, which was lovely. I loved that. And that was one of the reasons why I think and I enjoy being a puppeteer. I could walk, I walk down the street, nobody really knows me. And I quite like that. I quite like not being the star or, or being a face on television. I love doing all the characters, partly because my face with it's all right, but you know, I prefer to do puppet ones because I can be any sort of character. Zippy, you know, I can be a little mouse, a lion, a snake, or I can be a um, brains of, you know, Thunderbirds or something like that on a commercial. Nobody knows it's me doing all that. They just remember all these wonderful characters. Oh, 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 hello, sweep. Oh, wave, wave to everybody. Go on, say hello. That's it. Oh, very, that was a lovely wave. Thank you very much, sweet. Um, one of the singers on Rainbow in the early days was Matthew Corbett. And Harry Corbett, his father, was the, the originator of Sooty and Sweep. And they had moved from the BBC, or Harry had, with the Sooty show from the BBC to Thames Television. Over the, they did a few series with Harry fronting it. But, sadly, um, Harry Corbett had a, quite a major heart attack. And uh, which meant that he, he was told by the producers of the Sooty Show that he felt that he, you know, he'd be not really well enough to front the show, and perhaps maybe Matthew, your, his, you know, the son could take over, but Harry, you could still be working in the show, but not fronting it. And then he came to me and said, "Look, Ronnie, would you be interested in doing Sweep?" Well, I, I jumped at it because I mean, I as a child had seen Harry Corbett doing Sooty and Sweep on the television, so I was thrilled, and also. Because I'd been doing Rainbow and I was what was called studio bound, I was stuck in the studio with, Re with um, Sooty, I was able to go out on location and do wonderful scenes like climbing a mountain with the puppets, hiding me out the way with the film crew. Oh, what else did we do? We did all sorts of lovely things. Um, oh, magic, magical effects where I'd be sort of under a table holding a puppet still and they'd click and stop the film and then you'd move something and put another puppet there and bling, you know, it's sort of clever magical tricks. Um, so no, I had a whale of time working on the Sooty Show. Different experience because I was out of the studio a lot of the time, although we did do the main show in the studios. During that period, certainly in the 80s, other work turned up, as well as doing The Little Angel and um, work with the famous Jim Henson. So I was able to do, started to do film work. Um, and um, the first film that I was involved in was a wonderful film called Labyrinth that people do remember. Um, starred the, the famous David Bowie, uh, who sadly died this year, but, um, and Jennifer Conway, who was very young at that stage, a lovely actress. And that was an amazing thing to do. I had to audition for that part. I, funnily enough, at that time had done very little auditioning, in fact none really. Um, you could either do um, an audition with um, a little act or you could just improvise something. Well, I have a beaver puppet and um, this puppet I used and so it's what 30 years um, ago that Labyrinth was made so I had to still have this puppet and I brought him out and he was, um, he's a bit like a Kermit but a beaver. Hello, Beaver. What are you doing here? I'm here because I want to do my exercises. Oh, wonderful. He's going to do his exercises. Can you do it now? Yes. Go on then. <coughs> what was that? Was that your exercise? It wasn't. It was just a cough. I know. I wasn't ready. I was getting myself ready. All right, fine. Go off you go. No, don't, you don't have to do your cough. Just do it. <coughs> oh, I see you're doing your spit. So you can, yeah, all right, all right. Go on. Get on with it. <coughs> oh, that's... Oh, that's... Very nice. Is that your exercise? I, but I remember leaving the the rehearsal of not rehearsal room, but the church hall, and I literally screamed down the street. Ah! You know, I just felt so sort of exhausted and emotional about the whole thing. I just thought, oh, I don't know whether I'm going to get. It. Oh dear, oh dear, have I done the right thing? Anyway, about I don't know whether it was a week or a few days later, a phone call came. Hello, um, we'd love you to be on the film. Um, you're going to be an extra puppeteer. You're not going to be doing any starring roles, but you'll be involved in it. And I. You know, it was fantastic. And we had weeks and weeks of um, filming on Labyrinth. It was quite a long time. They didn't have a, what they do in films nowadays, they tend to call you what they call a daily. So you come in on the day that you're required rather than being sort of booked for the whole three months of filming or something. Um, and um, so that was a wonderful experience. I mean, the big sets, a lavish amount of money being spent on, 
on the film. David Bowie, you know, what you could ask for any more amazing um, actors, little little people doing the goblin, sort of jumping up and down. Um, oh, wonderful time, wonderful time. I've done wonderful other things, as I say, working with Henson's, working with um, oh, lots of other sort of film work, television work, different directors. They've all been interesting and you know, I always say touch would have the phone rings and somebody says, oh, would you like to do this job? You know, we've got this commercial we'd like you to work on or we'd like you to do this. So I'm quite lucky really. I haven't had to sort of, I have never been too scared about when the next job's coming. And now I've reached an age where in fact, I, I can um, sort of, I don't have to do the jobs. I'm, you know, I'm sort of a pensioner now, believe it or not. But anyway, um, I don't need to do as much work as I to do. And my family have sort of got their own families and stuff. So I, I don't have that responsibility too much. So I, I can sort of do things I really enjoy, such as still working at the Little Angel Theatre, still doing a lot of um, teaching and um, I work on the foundation course at the Little Angel Theatre. I also do a lot of talks now for about the history of the Little Angel and that's quite fun to do. I'm asked to do that. I've got a book coming out about my life, which is very exciting. And goodness knows what work will be happening in the future. Um, so yeah, there's um, still a lot of work ahead to do and it's all very exciting. Now, how do I f define me as a person working as a puppeteer for 50 years? I think it's hard work basically and pure ambition, pure and enthusiasm. I, I keep talking about enthusiasm, but you've got to keep being enthusiastic, enthusiastic about what you do. It's difficult to describe over so many years what the best sort of the best things, but I think it's enthusiasm, it's hard work, it's keeping friends with all the people that you've worked with over the years, which I've been lucky enough to keep keep that. Um, also um, giving back to all the young puppeteers who come up and talk to you, you know, your, all the, the stuff that you've learnt over the years too. I like to share all that stuff. I, there's no sort of um, secrecy about what I do. I try to uh, keep it open and share it all. So that's why I do a lot of teaching and, and um, talks and stuff like that. And hopefully um, people, you know, enjoy that and um, will be encouraged and, and puppetry will carry on for the next 50 years and longer, of course.